Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, shame and guilt, the distinction between the two, uh, and they must be distinguished, and specifically shame and guilt with reference to the sexes, meaning uh, what is the relationship of shame and guilt to men and women specifically? Uh, does one sex react differently uh, with uh, respects to the feeling of, say, shame? versus the other feeling of guilt and vice versa. So how does, how does shame and guilt apply to men and, and women? Uh, that's the micro scale. And then I want to talk about the macro scale, culture and civilization. And I will argue that um, a culture can in fact be primarily shame-based versus guilt-based. And that will have uh, a very, very strong influence potentially on behavioral outcomes in those people, specifically the women. Who, are make, who make up that culture, who are part of that culture. And then finally, I'm going to talk about <laughs> why uh, this concept of laying down the law and setting, setting up boundaries with women uh, does not work, or rather no longer works. Okay, that was a mouthful. Let's start with shame and guilt. Now, a lot of people use shame and guilt interchangeably, but they're really quite different. Um, they don't have uh, the same focal object. So I'll take a little quote here. This is an explanation, and I think it's a, it's a good summation of, or summary of, of, of the differences. The experience of shame is directly about the self, which is the focus of evaluation. In guilt, the self is not the central object of negative evaluation, but rather the thing done is the focus. While guilt is a painful feeling of regret and responsibility for one's actions, Shame is a painful feeling about oneself as a person. So listen to that again if you have to, but it's a very, very important distinction that uh, must be made because they are uh, really mutually exclusive uh, feelings, negative feelings, of course, but they're mutually exclusive. They don't, uh, they, they're not really that related to each other. And the primary point of distinction, of course, is the focal object. So in, in, in shame, the focal object is the self, and in guilt, the focal object is one's actions, with reference to the world usually, with specifically with reference to others. So that's an important distinction. We need to be aware of that. Now I'm going to argue that the sexes, both men and women, uh, react differently to uh, these feelings. It's not to say that shame and guilt are the exclusive uh, province of only, uh, say, shame is the exclusive province of women and guilt is the exclusive province of men. Of course, there's overlap. At the end of the day, we are human beings. There are some vague similarities between men and women. But the tendency, for example, in women to manifest uh, feelings of shame uh, tends to be much stronger than, uh, say, uh, feelings of guilt. And I would also argue that uh, men are much more likely to manifest feelings of guilt than they are of shame. And then I'll move on to the macro scale. Well, why am I saying that women are much more likely to manifest feelings of shame? Well, we've done a couple of analyses uh, in the past few weeks and in the past in general. We know, for example, that uh, women are, of course, hypergamous. Um, hypergamy itself is very much about um, one's, uh, one's status in relation to the world. One seeks to elevate oneself, as it were. Uh, and of course, uh, solipsism. We've observed that there is a strong possibility that, f that women are, from an evolutionary perspective, inherently solipsistic. Uh, that means most things that the woman views are simply uh, in, well, not most things, but certainly interpersonal relations and in and, and terms of actions, they're sort of a reflection of, of herself. So it all kind of reflects back to her. So if a woman is solipsistic, and I think the observation is justified, uh, we've presented a lot of evidence so far, uh, it could be argued that shame is a uh, much stronger uh, feeling in them than guilt, and why? Well, shame, as, as has been explained, is directly about the self, and it's the focal point of evaluation. On the other hand, guilt uh, does not have the self directly as its focal point, but rather others. Guilt in, involves a party of two or more, a party of yourself and, of course, someone else or several other people, or in the case of a nation, many, many people. The... Uh, 
the the distinction of course is that uh, with guilt it's it's inevitable it's it's unavoidable and inevitable that uh, you will have some in the feeling of your guilt you will have some relationship to the external world it's it's simply you can't get past it so for example uh, let's say uh, person a uh, you know sees an opportunity uh, someone drop someone drops his wallet sees the opportunity and in a moment of greed he snatches it up no one saw it and you know he has 50 bucks all of a sudden um, but he's not wholly amoral and so he thinks about it and he's sort of gripped by guilt of course this person who lost his wallet is walking away and he's sort of struggling with that feeling now you automatically have uh, two people two parties involved one the thief the guy who well stole the wallet and the uh, and the bereaved person, if if you will, the person who had the wallet stolen, it's unavoidable. That's what guilt is. With shame, of course, uh, it's in many ways a lot more subtle. Uh, shame, in my observation, doesn't need to have a, a can, of course, ra rather readily have a direct uh, uh, cause, a sort of a, 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 a identifiable and recognizable cause, but it tends to be a lot more nebulous. So, for example, a, a person who feels shame because, who knows, uh, he's overweight, or a female who feels shame because uh, her bust waist ratio isn't appropriate. I mean, and it could be anything. I mean, these are rather silly examples. But the point being that um, there is no specific interaction between that person and external parties. So, yes, women. I would argue are much more uh, inclined to feel feelings of shame. Well, for one thing, uh, or one reason why that that's the case is because, uh, as on the whole, women tend not to feel too much regret or remorse. Remember, if you're solipsistic in nature, your focus is the self. You're not focused on the outside. So even in cases where there are external parties involved, um, it's the 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 question in the female mind, or at least in the back of the female mind, is how her actions reflect upon herself with respects to other people. Um, so it's a question that, that automatically uh, goes back to the self. So for example, um, let's say a uh, woman uh, behaves atrocious, atrociously at some function or party and uh, causes, maybe even causes minor damages because she's drunk or something like that. Um, I would posit in a situation like that, she was amongst friends or what have you, that in that situation, she uh, she's not going to feel guilt, say, for the minor damages or the, uh, the, the well, putting her friends in a bad light, but rather she's going to reflect up back upon herself and think about how it made her look. You know? uh, that's not to say that a man wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, feel uh, any sense of shame in that sense. Of course he would, um, but I think the the distinction would be a man would be much more inclined to think about what he did to his friends or the, putting his friends in the bad light. So I I think a woman it's safe to argue that a woman autom tends to automatically reflect much more about herself with regards to her actions, even in cases where guilt might be the much more appropriate emotion because you'll have several parties several external parties involved including um, the perpetrator or the doer someone who who committed the action that might warrant guilt. Uh, but because the, the female solipsistic, solipsistic nature uh, almost exclusively focuses on the self with relation to the external world, uh, the, the, the guilt could be uh, transformed, trans transmogrified, if, if, if you will, into a feeling of, of, of shame, even though it's, it's from a logical perspective, uh, not particularly logical, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And of course, this uh, dovetails well, uh, well with the idea that uh, women uh, are more objects than they are uh, agents, uh, after all. Um, to, that is the difference between hyper-agency hyper versus hypo-agency. A hypo-agent, an object, uh, isn't going to be doing anything, right? She allegedly, at least, has no agency. Um, the world acts upon her. And if the world is acting upon a female or an object, uh, the only reaction that could be uh, that could be produced from that is a reaction of the self, i.e., shame. Let's fast forward a little bit to men. Well, 
as I said, men are not immune to shame and they're not immune to guilt. I mean, like I said, there is a, a rather free-flowing uh, interplay between these, these feelings, these emotions, but I will argue that men are much more likely to feel guilt than shame. And I'm arguing it from a position of, uh, of agency. That is to say that men are perceived as agents and very often are agents. They affect changes upon the world through their doings. And if a man commits an ill or a wrong, then uh, he's much more likely to feel, because he's acting upon the external world, he's much more likely to feel a sense of, uh, of guilt. As I said, the one man uh, furtively uh, gets hold of another man's wallet and sees he, he's got 50 bucks out of the deal. He might, he, I mean, and he's plagued by his conscience. Uh, he, that, that's guilt because he's A, wronging another person. Men tend to be much more aware of the external world. Men are, are certainly mar markedly less uh, solipsistic than women are, but also because he's a doer by nature. He affects changes upon the world. Action is his middle name, if you will. Uh, so a man, because he, he sees himself uh, in contrast to what many people claim, I mean, it's often it's, I find it odd that we, people often claim that women are much more focused on relationships. Well, I think it's missing the point. They might be much more focused on relationships, but they're much more focused on relationships as it relates to themselves. I would argue that men, on the whole, are much more fi focused on relationships um, from a much more healthy uh, health uh, from a healthier perspective because men don't see themselves as, uh, as so they're cert they're much less inclined to be solipsistic and they don't see themselves as the uh, the fo well the the focal point of attention in the universe. So a man is much more likely to think uh, about his actions in, in relation to others, and thus uh, guilt, ha having several parties involved, the doer and the receiver, as opposed to shame where there's only one party involved, uh, that is going to be a much more likely uh, feeling that manifests itself in, in, in men than it would be in, in women. So I, I, I've argued here that women are much more receptive to shame than they are uh, to feelings of guilt. Okay, there is that. Now that's the micro scale. What, what the sexes feel, how they uh, how they interact with these emotions, and so on and so forth. I'm also going to argue that on a on a macro scale, entire cultures can be based primarily, of course, not exclusively. As I said, you know, there there is a free uh, flow of these emotions sometimes, but it, there, there are certainly uh, overwhelming tendencies. So that a culture can be primarily one of guilt and one of shame. And we have a very nice distinction uh, in, say, Western civilization versus Eastern. Specifically, I would argue Korean and Japanese society with strong neo-Confucianistic uh, principles. Now, one of the reasons for this, say, in the West, and I'll begin with the West, the West is primarily a guilt-driven culture. Um, uh, a lot of this has to do with Judeo-Christianity, specifically Christianity. So if we look at the mythology of Christianity, uh, you'll see that uh, the concept of original sin, sin, sin itself is, a, is an admission of guilt. It's a sin, you cannot really sin against yourself. In fact, that's never argued uh, in Christian mythology. It, sin is, of course, something committed either against God or against others. So uh, sin itself is an admission of guilt. Uh, given the fact that for the better part of 2,000 plus years, Western civilization uh, was sort of infused with uh, Christianity, it's no surprise that it developed along lines along the lines of a guilt-based culture as opposed to a shame-based culture. Uh, that means that uh, the feelings that manifest themselves on a macro scale uh, are much, much more likely to be feelings of guilt than they are of shame. Um, and the basis of Christianity is a basis of relationship. So you have, uh, you have the deity and you have the, well, the, the, the worshipers. So they re you already have a relationship in that. And uh, with heritable sin, uh, you know, original sin, the, uh, the sin, of course, is a sin against God, against his goodwill, and so on and so forth, that's carried uh, almost like a virus in, in, uh, in, in, the, in the worshiper. So the, th that, is a, that is itself an admission of guilt. That you're in a, essentially in a constant state of guilt. I don't want to focus on that aspect too much. But just enough to, 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 to demonstrate, to illustrate that Western civilization, uh, having um, 
having developed along Judeo-Christian uh, lines and uh, I would say moral thought, but certainly uh, ethical thought and, and perceptions of the world tends much more to be a guilt-based uh, culture. And you can see this, as I said, in, in Christianity, but even in, in the sense, in the, well, the original, of course, the Old Testament, Genesis, it's, it's, a, it's a Jewish work, it's not Christian. And uh, you, you see this in the, the sinning against, uh, against God. And you might ask, what evidence I have for this beyond uh, this? Well, I don't wouldn't call myself an expert on German culture, but uh, I have a good deal of knowledge about not only German language, but German culture. And we can look at um, the manifestation of heritable, heritable sin, uh, that is, heritable guilt, in, in modern Germany. So, for example, we know that the Nazis committed horrendous crimes against millions of different kinds of people, uh, Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, uh, disabled people, political dissidents, and so on and so forth. The, that was, well, 60-some-odd years ago. And uh, Germans uh, are either taught, I would say primarily taught, it's, it's almost... Uh, I would say it's almost hammered into them in the school system that the crimes of the father are essentially the crimes of the son, which is very much a Judeo-Christian Judeo, uh, uh, perspective, specifically a Christian perspective. So you'll have Germans uh, who, you know, several generations removed from the events of World War II uh, and the atrocities that were committed, um, feeling, well, guilty, guilty for the sins of the father. And this is basically a manifestation of heritable sin uh, or heritable guilt. People feel en masse guilty for what happened previously. Um, and of course, it's not an, a question of shame because you have um, one perpetrator, whether the person actually had done it or not. So if you're actually a Nazi soldier at some point in time who committed atrocities, yes, you, you could have in theory at least, manifest guilt. Um, the great-grandson, however, um, has no reason to feel uh, guilt. He was not part of, it, part of it, but artificially you create an atmosphere of guilt. So uh, this sort of manifest a culture of, that's what I mean by a, a guilt culture in the West, a manifestation of heritable guilt, heritable sin, and uh, it, it, that, that is sort of transmitted through the generations. And of course, m several parties are involved. You know? That would be, I would, I would argue, one of the primary examples of that. Um, but you know, we, we, you see it throughout Western culture because Western culture did develop along Judeo-Christian uh, lines, primarily. Okay, so that's Western culture. But let's talk about some of the Eastern cultures. Let's talk about, say, Korean and Japanese culture. And these cultures, uh, at least in their modern incarnations, are growing astoundingly similar to Western culture in some respects. But uh, more traditionally, they have been uh, shame-based cultures. Now, it's a little more complicated, I'd say, than the, the, the simple explanations I offered for the, the guilt-based culture in the West, but here goes. The, the shame-based culture, namely the culture of, say, South Korea or, or Japan, is one in which... Uh, is primarily driven driven by a collectivist perception of society. I would you know both of these cultures are much more collectivist than they are, uh, say, the West. Um, and uh, oddly enough, uh, uh, much more shame based. Although it, it might not be that odd at all. The the individual is subsumed into the collective, and uh, for that reason, his actions are sort of the same as the collective actions and vice versa. Um, a person who um, a person who dishonors uh, the family name, for example, uh, will feel uh, less guilt than shame because because uh, the the collective is, is become becomes part of the individual. Uh, it's a very subtle thing. But that's my argument, that the, co the collective in such cultures is the individual and, and vice versa. There's not a whole lot of distinction. Well, that's, of course, changing. Uh, 
that feeling of shame uh, is one of the primary uh, motivating factors, for example, behind suicide. Uh, if you were to really simplify suicide, and and this is a very simple paradigm I'm offering, I'm, I'm by no means claiming it's, it's entirely accurate, but let's say that suicide is either caused primarily by shame or guilt. I would argue that in the West it's primarily uh, caused uh, by guilt and in the East primarily caused by shame. So for example, uh, those of you might know uh, ritual suicide in Japan practice up until the 19th century, uh, seppuku, which was essentially a slicing open of the belly, sometimes followed by decapitation, and also not limited to men. Uh, women would stab themselves in the heart with a kind of knife or a hairpin. Now, uh, originally this was part of the so-called bushido, the code of the sam uh, samurai, and uh, the, the warriors would do it because they had lost the battle and they had shamed their lord, uh, and thus, uh, rather shamed their lord, they had shamed themselves in the, in the eyes of the lord. So once again, the reflections to the self. In order to alleviate oneself of that shame, of that not guilt, but shame, the shame one has brought upon oneself, uh, one committed seppuku, the uh, ritual of suicide that we've seen, the slicing, over the, uh, slicing open of the, of the belly. That, of course, is an overt manifestation of shame. Um, now, in my Korea video, recent Korea video, I gave an example of the, in the 1940s of where a, uh, a bride commits uh, some sort of ritual of suicide, or just commits simply suicide after her, her husband, her partner, uh, dies of some, of some illness. And that action was then praised by the community and those in the, in, in the surrounding areas uh, as a, uh, an act of great duty and honor. Once again, an action based on shame. Uh, and it's, in, to my mind, no surprise that South Korea has the literally, quite literally, the highest suicide rates in the world. And although the male suicide rates are much higher in South Korea, as is typical than the female ones, uh, it also has the highest female suicide rates in the world. So, uh, shame, these, these cultures, which uh, are not primarily based on Judeo-Christian notions of, of heritable sin and guilt, are based on collectivist thought as it relates to the self. The self is a reflection of the collective, and thus um, ills committed against the collective are actually ills committed against the self, and that is the primary uh, uh, explanation for why that manifests as shame. So th these are the distinctions between uh, the, uh, the two cultures. Now, mind you, uh, this, is, this is me just speculating now. This, this next bit is pure speculation, but uh, Japan has slowly been slipping from, uh, it used to be the number one suicide nation in the world, most recently, I think it dropped to number seven. Still a very distinguished uh, uh, spot to hold, but it's uh, it's not quite up there anymore. And uh, maybe it's because the culture is slowly uh, transforming and there's a lot less shame going around. This is just speculation on my part. Um, you see, South Korean culture and Japan, Japanese culture are very similar, but I would argue, and based on my observations, South Korean culture has always been much more conservative and remains much more conservative. It's much more resistant um, than uh, to outside external influence in that sense than Japanese culture is. Um, that's just my observation and my speculation. So maybe that's one of the reasons. But South Korea is still number one in the world, a dubious distinction, a dubious honor indeed. So shame culture versus uh, guilt culture. And, of course, the sexist respective responses uh, to these feelings and how they navigate and interact with these feelings. And oftentimes, you'll hear it argued by, uh, for example, the people who love talking about the submissive Asian woman, which is mythology, uh, that you, know, you need to find a submissive Asian woman, or, barring that, you need to lay down the law establish boundaries, guidelines, you're the man, so on and so forth. Why that doesn't work, or why it no longer works? You see, a female's behavior uh, with regards to other, others is only mitigated or regulated or curbed to the extent that shame uh, is, uh, is heaped upon her as a consequence of that behavior. Remember, women are much less receptive to guilt and I would argue that's one reason why Western women uh, are, 
well, on the whole, I mean, there's not that much of a distinction, far worse than, say, uh, Asian women on the whole. I mean, it's certainly not saying that Asian women are a picnic. They're, they're not, and women are women at the end of the day. But that Western women have grown up in a guilt-based culture to which they are, from their, based on their very nature, is not very receptive. They're not receptive to, to guilt so much as they are shame. Now, in the olden days, uh, for example, wed, uh, children born out of a wedlock, that was a shameful thing, culturally speaking. Uh, it was uh, viewed as a shameful thing, and it was one thing that women uh, sought to, to avoid because of that shame. There was a large-scale cultural prohibition in the West uh, against that sort of thing. Mind you, it exists almost everywhere in the world, but we're talking about the West now. That prevented a fair number of women, at least, from uh, engaging in adulterous behavior or having children out of out of wedlock, because they were much more receptive to those shaming feelings, and and this is the important point: the culture at large supported that. The culture uh, was a buttress which supported that feeling of shame in the woman if she were to commit that uh, that act of adultery or have a child out of wedlock just as an example. In a culture that no longer is, has really has any shame, uh, shame or shame-based principles, and as I said, as I argued, uh, Western culture for the better part of 2,000 years has minimally been about shame and much been much more about guilt, where women, by their very natures, are much more receptive to feelings of shame than guilt, the, the loosening of, uh, of female... Uh, mores, if you will, is going to take place at a far, far more rapid rate than perhaps uh, elsewhere. And certainly, the the levels, the 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 depth of that loosening of 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 personal behavior and mores is going to be perhaps as well far greater. Um, this is why, then, this would be my explanation as to why Western culture, especially the United States, but anywhere in the West, has given rise to the sort of female it has. Um, there is no shame uh, because, well, we've, we've given up on any system of shame. That's not to argue that a system of shame is good or bad. I'm just being descriptive here. Uh, because there, there is no shame for a woman to have a child out of wedlock. And indeed, it's praised often. Single mothers in society are often praised as uh, heroines and you know, doing, uh, engaging in, in monumental and difficult work, and, and, and no doubt it's difficult to raise a child on your own, but it's certainly praised as something positive half the time. And uh, there is no consequence for uh, female behavior. What does this mean specifically? Well, um, we know for the most part that women don't feel too much guilt, so th th whatever actions they committed, uh, if uh, guilt will not be enough of a hindrance to them to prevent them from committing. So uh, women who commit false rape accusations, um, it, most men uh, would, would feel tremendous guilt at, uh, if they had done the similar things. They would guilt quite, light, quite literally might eat away at them for, for the rest of his life, perhaps. Um, and because you have several parties involved. You have the accused and the accuser. The procedures some women use in splitting up uh, with their with their partners, I mean, uh, text messages, Skype, under some of the most dubious circumstances. Now, like I said, I don't like bringing up the personal, but um, when my last ex split up with me, I had a tumor, which at the time it turned out to be benign, had it removed, but I didn't I didn't really know uh, it could have been um, could have been uh, malignant. I also had an important job interview the very next day, all of which she knew about, and it didn't stop her. I mean, that's what I mean, that th there is no sense of guilt. Had the positions been reversed, it's not that I've never split up with women before. I have, uh, although I had been pushed to extremes, another reason that men tend to tolerate a lot more and much more patient in that regard. Uh, I've, I've never uh, split up with a woman under such dubious circumstances, and had the roles been reversed, I never would have gone through with it in that manner. It's just I w the guilt would have eaten away at me. So, yes, uh, getting back to the, the point at hand, focal point, uh, guilt versus shame, well, we, if, if women feel, on the whole, feel no guilt, yet we live in a guilt-driven culture, it's very unlikely that they're going to show any remorse. If there's no shame factor and no shame element in the culture, 
what's the consequence of that? It, 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 what, what the feeling that women I- are receptive to, namely shame primarily, is not going to resonate with them. And thus, there will be no hindrance. They w- there will be no prevention uh, of uh, ill behavior, uh, either coming from others or coming from themselves, for the simple reason that the, the, the cues aren't there. There's no societal cue anymore for a woman to feel shame, whether she's laughing at a man uh, having his, his cock uh, cut off, whether she's um, engaging in false rape accusation, whether... Uh, I mean textbook textbook remember a while back i posted that video of, of, of the cab driver in canada and how these women um, basically on a whim were, were going to say that they, he had sexually assaulted them of course they felt no guilt the culture uh, simultaneously that's the, that the culture canadian culture which isn't canadian culture it's western culture western culture does not reinforce any feeling of shame uh, in females this is an element of female psychology that is not being tapped into and thus we see the uh, the dissolute and rampant behavior of the modern Western female uh, to uh, to an extent that uh, is just just one's left in, uh, in a state of incredulity half the time. Although the more you see it, the more you get used to it. Although it never ceases to amaze, I suppose. So that that is in my assessment, one of the primary factors why you have uh, Western women just going hog wild, doing name or whatever they want. Guilt doesn't register with them, though that's the basis of the culture. At the same time, we have no shaming factor anymore. We have no shame effect because women can do whatever they want and they're not made to feel shame because of that. Okay, so let's talk about Eastern culture. As traditional and as conservative as, say, South Korean or Japanese culture are, these things are changing. And um, that's why 60 years ago, a bride might have committed suicide due to incredible, intense feelings of shame uh, at the loss of her partner, but you're not going to see that anymore, although they do commit suicide for other reasons. Uh, Most of the reasons, say, South Korea, which, as I said, number one suicide in the world they commit uh, suicide for, a lot to do with performance, of course, men at double the rate than women, um, but uh, it is a reflection of the self in reference to others. But with a loosening of that, when, when whether the culture is primarily shame-based or not, if there is a reduction in the shame factor, as I'll call it, that will have a direct influence and effect on the women involved in that culture, I would argue. That is why the uh, idea of establishing boundaries and laying down the laws, has been argued by some, doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work because there is no cultural reinforcement. It certainly doesn't work in the West because, well, we know Western culture is primarily guilt-driven as opposed uh, to shame-driven, and uh, women in the West are, well, allowed to do anything and there's no shame involved whatsoever. And it's being... Uh, not so gradually, but rather rapidly reduced in, in Far Eastern cultures such as Japan and and South Korea, uh, and um, you can you can certainly uh, you can certainly see it in in other cultures, the Southeastern Asian cultures as well, which have also have very strong uh, soci- cultural distinctions as opposed to Western culture. Although I'm not I'm you know I I'm I'm always honest. I don't know nearly as, as much about southeastern culture as I do say about far eastern culture, namely Chinese, South Korean, Japanese culture. And as that loosens, the, the, the shame factor will weaken as well, and that will, of course, have a direct effect on female behavior, which means they'll be a lot less receptive to reproach and, uh, and reprimand. So just as an example, when I reprimanded my ex uh, for her oft-times childish behavior, I often got more of it. Now, you can go on arguing that it's because I wasn't an alpha male or what have you, but uh, that simply doesn't add up. Uh, by all in- intents and purposes, I was an alpha male uh, with respects to her. Uh, I was 11 years older, <laughs> I had an actual income, a lot more experience, and I was, quite frankly, a hell of a lot more intelligent than she was. Uh, these, you know, But she wasn't receptive to it, and I would argue, um, even though she was South Korean, that uh, you had a... She'd lived in the United States for six years. Whatever shame culture she had been exposed to had totally evaporated by the time she was in the United States. 
So uh, that, uh, that contributed, of course, to this lack of response. And I've had other, you know, full disclosure, yes, I've had other Asian girlfriends. Um, I've had a Chinese girlfriend, I had a Japanese girlfriend once, mostly I've had experience with South Korean uh, women, and uh, bec I've, every time and again I can make the same observation, to varying degrees of course, that uh, these women were no longer receptive to this sort of reprimand, lay down the law approach for the simple reason that the, the societal consensus, remember the societal consensus has become such that uh, it is no longer a shaming consensus. Women are excused for their behavior time and time again. So, do you remember a while back I talked uh, about that Korean report which was uh, basically uh, lambasting uh, foreign men for so allegedly seducing Korean women and the Korean women were victims? I would argue in a, in a culture that had, or in an earlier setting of Korean culture, uh, where you know, have a much more heavily shame-based culture, that the w the women in, in the would be shamed in that situation, but in that video we saw that it was it was the po finger pointing to the west the, the western men who were seducing them and and uh, trying to uh, get them pregnant and do all sorts of evil things. Um, so the women were not made to feel shame, uh, but the men were of course made to feel guilt for their actions for what they committed. When when the consensus on a societal wide scale is not one which results in shame, women will not respond to it. Because women, as we know, are collectivists. And I would argue that shame, uh, for the most part, is a collectivist feeling, because a collective is simply a manifestation of many individuals. It's a bit complicated, I realize, but uh, that is my argument. Uh, women being collectivists will respond to collectivist reproach, uh, even if it's manifested in an individual. If you as a man reproach a woman in a shame culture where that shame culture is reinforced, and reflects the societal consensus, she will respond to it. That doesn't mean that her that she's a, a, a good loving wife or a good loving girlfriend it has nothing to do with that. It simply means that the culture uh, will back up your reproach in the sense that it will reinforce her much more her much stronger tendency and, and, and uh, receptiveness to feelings of shame. Uh, absent that, it doesn't matter if you reproach her or not, and the culture is not going to back that up. Um, this is why you have women acting like spoiled little brats, getting away, in some cases, with bloody murder, and not really feeling a whole lot about it. After all, they don't feel much guilt, and there is no shame factor involved. So, I think in a nutshell, uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about and explain. Uh, you can't, uh, without a cultural uh, bulwark, if you will, behind you, the laying down the law, setting up the rules approach uh, doesn't work. And it doesn't work because, well, women and men are, 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 are receptive in different ways to the feelings of guilt and shame. Women are primarily shame-driven and men are primarily guilt-driven. And uh, in the West, yeah, guilt-driven guilt culture um, well, with no shame, shame factor whatsoever, that explains why Western women are far more atrocious than, than, than Eastern women. I mean, not that any woman is uh, is trustworthy in that sense, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, I've talked a mouthful yet again, and I've had a lot of time recently to make videos, it's true, but that's going to be changing rather rapidly. I'm going to be quite busy this next few weeks, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that little exposition. And, uh, oh yeah, recently, uh, I, I, the pendulum swings back and forth, but recently I did break 2,000 subscribers, I'm back under 2,000, and while I'm not a subscription whore, uh, it is a good thing because the more people that are informed of these ideas, the more men specifically who are informed of, the I of these ideas, the better because they're going to get exposure. And uh, the most important thing is that, the, the, I think Barbara also mentioned this many times, but the marriage strike. Uh, let, let's, be, let's be frank. The only thing that seems to resonate with women and produce these Man Up articles and where have all the good men gone is that uh, men just opting out of the system. Nothing else works. I think at the end of the day, we know that's far more effective than political action. So the more men get exposed to these ideas, the more they understand, um, the the better. So more su subscribers are always good. And uh, yeah, let me, I, 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 I very, uh, from the bottom of my heart, uh, I'm grateful to the subscribers who uh, appreciate uh, my thoughts and insight.
And, uh, you know, I'll continue doing this to the extent I have time and uh, I'm not dead. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I have to say, I believe. Just plumb through my thoughts. And, yeah, that's it. So, uh, everyone, uh, take care. I hope to see you, well, in the, in the not all too distant uh, future. And I wish you all well. And uh, just uh, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on spreading the word. Take care.